In today's video, I'll be playing a full grand challenge going all the way from 0 to 12 wins using the best hog cycle deck in Clash Royale right now. Let's get right into it and try to get the 12. So Hog Earthquake is one of the most consistent decks in the game. It kind of feels like no matter what the meta is, it is always viable. And of course, the evolution that pairs with it best is the Evolve Firecracker. I would say right now, Hog is one of the only decks that the Evolve Firecracker pairs quite well in. And if you don't have the Evolve Firecracker, as always, you can still run her inside of Grand Challenges, Classic Challenges, and Royal Tournaments where the evolutions are unlocked in. And I imagine a lot of you guys, even those of you guys who are free to play, might actually have the Evolve Firecracker because it was one of the first evolutions in the game. And I know a lot of the free to play players ended up choosing her as the evolution because she was kind of the most broken one upon release anyway. So we're going to pop the ability over there with the Mighty Miner on top of the Skelly Drags. This is also one of the only decks where the, uh, the Mighty Miner is actually very good in as well. It pairs very nice with the Hog. So we defend that without too much trouble. The Skelly Drags are going to be quite a nuisance though. Not going to lie, just because we don't have a direct response to them. But that's all right. He actually isn't going to get the king activated, which is really good. Because he didn't play the bomb tower in the best position he could have. So, we know what he's using now. He's got a building, which is going to be good against our hog. But we have the earthquake to hopefully allow ourselves to break through that. So, we'll see how this goes. So let's just go for a mighty miner in the back here. See what he wants to do. We have our evolved firecracker ready to go. So hopefully we can get some value out of her. We know he's got a poison. So we're not going to, of course, play the firecracker too, too low, especially on the left, giving him a free poison. So instead, I'm going to play it on the right here. We're going to pop the mighty miner. That should be pretty solid. He's going to go miner. He didn't miner the firecracker though. We're just going to go for an ice spirit here. And then I'm going to send in the hog. And I think, um, oh shoot, I was hoping that Evolve Firecracker was going to end up shooting the Skelly Drags. It got distracted. It still ends up shooting them, but just a little later than I, uh, than I would have hoped, let's put it that way. But either way, we take the lead with that Hog there because he decided to not go for his Bomb Tower for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why, but certainly helped us out. We're going to send in the Hog here, and then we're going to go for an Earthquake. He misplaced the Bomb Tower. Hog is going straight towards the tower, and just like that, I think we're going to get a pretty easy game one over here. Pretty much as expected. Typically, you know, the first few games in the Grand Challenge are gonna be easy for the most part especially if you're using a good deck and that's what happens most of the time of course there's some rare occurrences where you might actually get someone that even has won a grand challenge first game in the gc that would be unlucky but i have had that happen before but this is most of the time what you will expect i mean what he was using was pretty meta to be fair but he had the skelly drags in the deck which is interesting because yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. He had the Miner, but he kind of had a hybrid deck going on because typically the Miner Poison deck in the meta doesn't have Skelly Drags. But either way, I'll see you guys when we find the next one. All right, we're against PGM here. So we can just start with Hog first play. That is a very good starting play. It's relatively safe as well. Even if they end up having the Tornado, it's still a good play because if they have NATO... They're going to get the King Tower activated anyway eventually against the Hog, so it's not really a big deal if they do it right away, if that makes sense. So we're going to go Ice Spirit Goblins. Luckily, I played those Goblins a little bit after he deployed that Earthquake, so we ended up keeping them alive. If they went down to the Earthquake, it would have been a problem. I would have had to overcommit probably with the Bomb Tower, but luckily I did not have to do that. Well, let's go ahead and cycle our Firecracker here so we can start getting to the Evolve one as quick as we possibly can. We're going to go in for a hog here. Let's see if he plays his bomb tower in a better placement this time. Nope, still a very bad placement. Once again, that was an opportunity for him to activate the king tower if he ended up playing the bomb tower lower because, of course, the firecracker was there, but he decided not to do that. So once again, we're going to defend this hog with the goblins instead of using the bomb tower because I had a feeling he was going to do the same thing again, and sure enough, he did. He went in for the Earthquake. Goblins stay alive this time around, and one of them actually ends up getting a chip shot on top of the tower. So, amazing start in this, what appears to be mirror match, except he does have the Skellies instead of the Goblins, and then he might have something instead of the Mighty Miner. Some people prefer to use Knight instead of the Mighty Miner, but I, I think Mighty... Oh, well, he misplayed the Bomb Tower again. You know, it's... uh. It's not that difficult to play a bomb tower, at least in my opinion, but this opponent in the last one have 
kind of had a rough time, to be fair. So we're going to get our bomb tower in the optimal position. That actually allows us to activate the king tower, of course, against his firecracker. And just like that, it looks like he gave up. So that's uh, going to be pretty easy win over here. I'll take it. Just guess we'll just go ahead and three crown him because I assume he, yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Got to take these uh, freebies early on while you can. All right. Well, let's go ahead and three crown. All right. There we go. Like I said, he gave up. So just let us three crown him. That's going to be game number two. Still 10 more to go. So doesn't really matter all that much that we had an easy start because the, uh, the later games are the most challenging. There's often times where I end up going 6-0, 7-8-0 oh, really easily, and then I have a rough time towards the end of the challenge, and I end up uh, kind of losing the challenge sometimes at the end, even when the start is very good. So I wouldn't uh, get too overly excited winning the uh, the games early on. Even if you're someone who has won a grand challenge, just just keep in mind uh, it's, it's, it's just kind of a warm-up in all honesty. So this guy's got Wizard Valkyrie already looking like it's going to be most likely a pretty easy win. Just because the deck itself looks pretty bad and then, you know, on top of that we ended up getting a lot of damage from our first hog because he decided to defend it with a Valkyrie for whatever reason, which of course is not, not a good counter to the hog at all. And second hog coming in, getting loads of damage on the tower, and yeah, this is already... Pretty much a wrap. He might even waste the dash on the Golden Knight. I wouldn't be surprised. Nah, he didn't play it. Okay. So he is going to go for the Wizard, though. Uh, we could probably pop the ability just to damage the Wizard. It's not going to kill it, but it's just the type of thing where it's like he mine as well. And then we'll just go Firecracker to clean up, and then we're, uh, we're kind of chilling here. So, yeah, this is pretty much GG at this point. All I got to do is defend, because we already got more than enough damage on his tower. Not sure what that Valkyrie was. We're just going to go for a Hog here. And, uh, yeah, we are kind of, kind of big chilling here. That, uh, <laughs> that was funny. So not only did the firecracker somehow dodge his firecracker, but we got a king activation out of that. I swear I could have lied and said that was calculated, but I, I'm, I, you know, I got to admit that was just, um, that was just kind of lucky. I, I don't even know. I don't even know how that happened. Loki, that, that was just... Wow, that's, I mean, that's just one of those things where it's a bit of a head scratcher. You're just not sure how it happened, but it's like, I'll take it, you know? All right, well, we'll just, uh, let's see here. So that's going to be tower down. I guess we'll log this and uh, go for a mighty miner. And then let's see, go firecracker like this. And yeah, we're kind of chilling at this point. His evo cracker is going to shoot, go goblins to hopefully take her out. Nope, it doesn't get taken out. But... Oh, nope, still didn't die. Oh, well, it's, it's all right. I'm not really too worried. Oh, yeah, this is a super easy matchup anyway. Even if he didn't make those mistakes, the bomb tower is just incredible against the Royal Hogs. It's actually why the bomb tower is, I would say, in my opinion, the best building in the game right now. It's just so good in the meta because there's a lot of people using Royal Hog Cycle. And then, of course, the bomb tower is really good against stuff like the, the, uh, the Hog Rider, too. And then also... E giant it's really good against because the e giant because the lightning isn't as good against the bomb tower compared to the cannon the lightning instantly takes out a cannon whereas a bomb tower is a bit sturdier so it's actually going to end up staying alive and distracting the e giant for a much longer period of time so it's just probably the most consistent building in the game in my opinion at least in this meta so we're just sending in the hog here he goes minor in the back interesting that he played it in the non-safe spot because of course had i had the tornado he would have paid the price for that but unfortunately i don't have the tornado so we aren't able to yeah take advantage of that so i think we're just going to go for a firecracker here if he has a poison he likely will use it on top of the firecracker if i had to guess yeah there we go so i called that we're just going to go for a mighty miner here same lane as the little prince and we'll see if he decides to support the little prince in any way or if he'll just let it walk, uh, well, I mean, I guess that answers that question, he does pop the ability, I'm gonna send in the hog here, and he's gonna have a bomb tower, so this is actually, I would say, in my opinion, a somewhat challenging matchup, I don't think it's horrible, per se, okay, that sucks the bomb didn't end up hitting the, the tower, that, that really is quite unfortunate, um, 
I do think we outcycled his bomb tower. I believe he needs to play one more card before he's back to it. Um, okay, well, there we go. He just went Ice Spirit and Knight, and as a result, he's going to take two shots from that hog. So that's really solid. He spent an even amount of elixir on the hog, and we got two hits. That's really good. That's very good value, that hog for us. I mean, pretty much any hog you play that ends up getting a shot on the tower is generally going to be worth it. There's very few exceptions, like maybe if you're over committing and they get a massive counter push against it. But generally, that's a good rule of thumb. If you end up getting a, uh, a hog shot, then it was likely a good play to go in for that hog. So I don't know what he's doing here, but we're just going to go for a hog to distract all that and then get an earthquake going. He kind of misplaced the bomb tower. As a result, he may actually take a shot. No, he ends up going for the ice spirit, so he kind of saved himself there. All right, let's see. So he decided, wow, that is pretty crazy that he just poisoned that. Um, we're going to just get a log going here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go in for a hog and then go for the Evo firecracker, and we'll see if we can get something out of this here. Okay, I don't know how the... Um, Okay, that was actually really unfortunate, not gonna lie. I don't even know how the... Let's see here, though. What I'm trying to say is I don't even know how the King Tower got activated. That was quite... That was quite disappointing to witness. We're gonna try to get something going here, though. That was a really good log, and the Hog is gonna... Oh my gosh, it did not get a shot. That's That's disappointing. All right, well, I'm going to get a Mighty Miner down, because I have a feeling he really wanted... To, I was thinking he was going to send in a Miner. He didn't. Okay, well, there it is. We get an Ice Spirit, though, that didn't end up... <sighs> Man, that really sucks. Let's just Earthquake here. Oh, he misplayed the Bomb Tower. What has it been? Every opponent so far has been misplacing the Bomb Towers. Everyone that's had the Bomb Tower, that's like... It keeps happening. That's wild. Um, We're going to... Oh, shoot. Why did the firecracker... That's so unlucky that I'm not getting my Evo firecrackers lined up on the tower. Like, I don't know how it shot the bomb tower. That was just so lame. I, I don't know, man. That was just... That was just so pathetic. I don't know. Anyway, this hog gets a shot. There we go. That's going to be a nice win over there. Definitely a challenging matchup, in my opinion, because I think he made a fair share of mistakes, but... Well, it actually wasn't that close. I mean, we won by a good margin. Like, let's not kid ourselves here. We won by, like, 700, 600 HP, which isn't, like, extremely close. Like, it didn't really come down to the wire. Like, it was 100, 200, but it was still relatively close, especially for a lot of the mistakes he ended up making with placements and stuff. But I think a large part of that is it's just a pretty challenging matchup. Um, I think that Minor Poison is tough when you're running Hog because they have a fast cycle, too, and it's often hard to outcycle their... Uh, their buildings so you know it was still close despite him making a lot of mistakes and also there were a couple times where i feel like i got a tiny bit unlucky it might have been a skill issue on my end but where the firecracker like just didn't line up on the tower and that was really obnoxious um anyway we're gonna get a free couple hundred damage with that activation over there and this guy is gonna have the recruits so we'll f try to figure out what kind of variation he's got we'll probably see pretty soon so he is going to have the... I actually just realized, like, he's got... This is a very strange recruit deck that he has. Like, no joke. Very strange. Um, he has the Ram Rider, Recruits, Poison. I, I genuinely don't know what this is. I'm going to assume... I mean, there's a few cards... He, I, I think there's a couple cards he hasn't used yet. So he's got the Fisherman, so we know that now. Very interesting, though. I mean, he got the King activated, but... I don't think it really matters all that much, especially since, um, is it even, uh, I think it, oh, I was kind of taking my chances. I didn't know if that was going to charge or not, but it did. That's actually okay. I'm just going to let the fisherman get damaged, so he's going to have to, like, split damage a bit, but that's completely fine. That's, you know, that's not really a bad thing most of the time, because, yeah, I mean, then it's, like, it's kind of using your tower's health as a resource instead of over committing. So you're kind of regaining elixir, if that makes sense. So we're just going to go for a hog here and see what uh, what happens, I guess. The hog is going to get a shot. We're just going to log those. And then we're going to get a firecracker going here. Pop the ability on the mighty miner to take the shield off those. And then go goblins and... 
yeah, I think, um, I think we're all right here. We're going to send in the hog. It's going to distract the Dark Prince, force a fisherman out of him. I think I'm going to get a mighty miner down. Yeah, I definitely need that. And then we just go gobs on top of the... Ooh, okay, hold up. Um, we're going to need our bomb tower to save us here. Wow, see what I mean by the bomb tower being, like, pretty OP sometimes? It just defended everything. That was actually wild. Like, it literally... It basically defended everything for us. Like, that was that was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> like, there was so much coming in the right lane, and then I literally just went bomb tower, and it's just like, boom. And that's, like, all it took. Pretty wild. Um... We got a little bit of an issue over here, though. Not gonna lie. This is a little bit of a problem. Uh, we're we're alright, though. That that actually looked really scary, but I, I'm completely fine. Somehow I survived that. And now I think we're big chillin' because he, um... Because now he doesn't have his Evo recruits. So, like, he has to get back to those, which is obviously good because they're just so annoying to deal with. So now that I don't have to worry about them for at least like a little bit it's quite nice i'm trying to get my uh, can we get like a hog hit there we go that's really good we finally got one just gonna get a bomb tower going here he goes bandit in the opposite lane i feel like we're probably fine just gonna go goblins to pull all that to the center and uh we can actually take a little bit of damage let's just go in when he doesn't have his fisherman in cycle um i think that hog is gonna be able to get a shot finally there we go that's gonna be gg that was kind of an annoying match i don't think it was that hard of a matchup but it was just annoying i think the fisherman actually was what kind of gave him the highest chance there of winning that because the evo recruits are annoying to deal with but the bomb tower is quite solid against them and the law goblins you have distractions but the fisherman made it hard for me to get damage and double and triple as long as he saved it for the hog so that was kind of our biggest obstacle that we had to work around but we ended up making it work. So he's going to have a healer. This is probably going to either be Golem or Elixir Golem for sure, just from seeing that. So we'll see what he does end up having here. I'm just going to go for a log and I don't know. Let's just hog in the other lane and then go for like an ice spirit here. Yeah, let's see. Um, All right. I don't think I'm going to bother protecting the firecracker simply because it's not even really worth it anyway. Um, we're just gonna go gobs here and then get a firecracker going. Okay, it is a little annoying he did that, but I'm prepared. Just mighty miner. And, uh, oh, that sucks the firecracker was shooting that instead of the... Wow, that actually really sucks. I mean, it's okay, but that was quite annoying. Um, I decided to let that go instead of popping the ability. I think we actually got more damage as a result of that. So, Hog coming in here. He's gonna go E-Drag. Is gonna... Oh, wow. So he didn't even... That was kind of weird. So, he... Activate the King Tower off the Firecracker, but then NATO the Hog anyway, so... Okay, I mean, yeah, that works. That's a lot of damage. If he has Pump, that's really good, because then it's just completely useless in this matchup. If he does end up having it. I don't know if he does, though. It's it's kind of... It's kind of a toss-up, because... I don't know. It Well, that answers that question. There we go. I think he has Pump, guys. I don't know. I think he has it. Yeah, there we go. So... He does have that, that's good to know, because um, it's essentially going to be completely a dead card in the deck, and it's also going to be the pretty much the exact reason why um, the uh, this matchup is going to be quite good for us, whereas if he didn't have the pump, it would be harder, because the Earthquake would essentially get no value, but now it's getting a lot of value, and this is probably going to be GG now. To be fair, I think even if he didn't have the pump, Golem isn't that bad of a matchup, especially when you stack Firecrackers and they don't have anything for it like literally they only have um they they just have the nato to pull it in and you have to rely on getting lucky with the e-drag ch chaining it and sometimes you just can't do that or you just end up being able to take out the e-drag because of course um you know uh let's see okay so we're just gonna send that in the other lane we're gonna get a bomb tower going here i wonder if i should have cycled a firecracker before going bomb tower it's okay but that I didn't, but I definitely feel like I should have. I'm gonna go hog here just to kind of block. Um, he's gonna NATO all that together. Let's see. We're gonna need a. Um, we definitely need an Evo uh, firecracker here to save ourselves, and then we're just gonna pop the ability with the mighty miner. 
and we're we're gonna be fine this looks bad but we have so much health on our tower that we're kind of gonna use our uh our hp as like a resource and we could probably just eq cycle it's gonna be hard to get another hog through so i kind of identified that and i'm just like at this point we could probably just earthquake cycle although he did just use his nato there so now we can pretty likely just send in the hog and finish off the game yeah there we go that's gonna be a nice win over there so yeah not like too bad of a matchup i don't think it's you know of course you have to play well because one slip up on defense could cost you the game when defending a big golem push but it's really hard for them to build that golem push when they're earth when you have earthquake for their pump so it's just never gonna get them any value and they should never have an elixir advantage so we're halfway through the grand challenge now six no really good stuff but of course it only gets harder from here so we still need to be playing our best so we're just going to go for an ice spirit here to distract the mortar and then i'm just going to go for an earthquake on top of it because pretty much more likely than not there isn't really going to be anything else we're going to want to earthquake more than the mortar in this type of matchup that's probably a pretty safe thing to say so we're just going to go for the firecracker here and okay so he is going to minor it but that doesn't really matter that much because yeah i mean the miners can get a little bit of chip but nothing too crazy so let's just send in the hog here see what other cards he has in his mortar deck he's going to have the guards and he is going to go in for the mortar so let's just do that and then earthquake i think that should be a pretty fine way of defending i mean maybe it would have been better to go for my firecracker on the mortar instead of earthquaking but I think it's okay. Should be good enough. So he's going to go for his little prince. Um, let's see here. I'm probably going to go for my firecracker. This time, though, I'm going to play it same lane. Let's kind of see what he wants to do, though. Let's go firecracker. Okay, nice. I'm glad I waited. I had a feeling he was going to want to use the ability, and sure enough, he did use it. So let's send in the hog here. We did manage to, I believe, outcycle his mortar. Yeah, he played minions, and he went for a log. That was good defense, though, on his end, to be fair. He managed to prevent the Hog from getting a single shot, so that was well played. Even though he did end up overcommitting, I have to address the minions, so it was a solid defense on his end. And this might be a little rough for us, even though we're winning right now. It might be hard to get some of the Hogs to the tower, but let's, uh, let's see what we can do, of course. So we get a nice log going over there. Let's see. We go for goblins like this. Okay, he is going to go for... Hmm, I think we're going to need to go for a hog in the opposite lane for sure. He's just going to split the... Okay, let's see. I was kind of waiting to play my Evo Firecracker, but now seems like as good of a opportunity as any. We're going to need to distract everything here with our hog. That was actually a really nice hog kite. I'm pretty happy with that. Wow, this Evo Firecracker is definitely going to get a lot of value because he's letting it stay on the board for quite some time. So that's pretty cool. Oh wow, it ended up walking in the left lane. He's probably going to activate the King Tower here. Yeah, he does. Let's actually get an Earthquake going though. And then I'm going to get a Hog. And then we're going to go Hog like this. We're going to Log because he's probably going to want to play Guards. Yep, called that. That was really nice. And he went for Prediction Miner because he thought I was going to Firecracker. Really happy I didn't play that. That Hog push might have just won me the game. Um, It very well could have won me the game. Let's see, do I need to... Yeah, I'm going to go Mighty Miner here, because actually this is perfect. I can send the Mighty Miner in the other lane to kill the minions. Let's get an Earthquake going here, and he is going to go for the guards. We get a log. Okay, sweet. That's really good. So now what we're actually going to do is we're going to switch things up again and go in the left lane. We're going to have our Firecracker. Um, yep, sweet. He just... Okay, this is really good, because he just... All right, nice, nice, nice. So, he, again, he used his Evo Mortar on defense instead of offense, which is really good. Um, Alright, so... Okay, so we go Mighty Miner, same lane as the Little Prince. We have a small lead right now. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, We're going to want to log for sure the left lane. Okay, sweet. He just wasted a poison in the lane he's not going in. That is very, very good for me. Um, Let's see here. Alright. We just got to make sure that Mortar doesn't get on our tower. That's the most important thing right now. Uh, oh, wow. He minored instead of... That's interesting. He minored on defense instead of the tower. I was not anticipating that. 
So we're just going to go in here. That's a free earthquake on the mortar as well as his tower. And this is looking more and more like it's probably going to be GG at this point. Hog is actually going to end up getting a shot on the tower. And, oh, that earthquake is not hitting the mortar, I don't think. I think it's going to be fine, but it's a little bit scary for us. Let's get a... Yeah, we need a Mighty Miner here for sure. The ability. We need that. Cleaning everything up. Okay, boom. Earthquake on the mortar and... Oh my gosh, I got a little scared. I thought that Guardian was gonna, like, take my whole tower, but luckily, yeah, we're fine. Okay, that got... I got a little nervous, but we're okay. We kept our composure there at the end. So yeah, as you can see... Even though it might be slightly our matchup, or you would expect it to be easy for Hog, definitely not super easy. It got, like, a little intense at some moments, and I think overall, I played that quite well, so that was a nice win. Five more to go. So we're on our next one here against CM. We could start Mighty Miner first play, or I could just go Firecracker first play. I think Firecracker first play is fine, just because we're getting to the Evolve one quicker. If he's not going to do anything, I'm going to Mighty Miner at the bridge, because he's trying to get the King activated, obviously, but... If he's... Yeah, this is actually completely fine, in my opinion. Uh, like, he just acted... What the heck? Wow. Um, a little bit of a voice crack there. But anyway, this is, like, really good for me, this start. Like, it doesn't even matter that he activated the King Tower, because, like, look at how much damage we got. <laughs> that was um kind of a weird start. Like, he, that's why you don't want to leak Elixir like that, just to get the King activated, because good Hog players will keep up the, uh, you know, the pressure. Like, notice how I supported the Firecracker. I protected her with the Mighty Miner, and because he leaked, like, two or three Elixir, we we had an incredible start. That's why, like, when you're running Hog, you want to be pressuring a ton in single Elixir and capitalizing off of things like that, because if your opponent even wastes just a couple... Okay, wow, and he just used... That was extremely aggressive, and he used his Barbarrel already, so these Goblins are going to be a nuisance for him to deal with. It forces a knight out of him. He likely is going to be able to defend, but that was basically just a free, I mean, free pressure for me, like a free earthquake damage on the tower, and that lightning didn't really benefit him in any way because it's a negative three trade, and at this point, he really has to be setting up just E-Giant pushes. I don't know. So we're just keeping the pressure on here. So once again, he's going to Barb Barrel, something that isn't really valuable to go for a bar barrel on. So let's just go for goblins like this to pressure a tiny bit, and then we'll just go for a mighty miner. And okay, so he does have a bowler. So what I'm thinking is we're going to log the bowler and then go for a hog to distract, and then probably go for... Okay, I was going to say an earthquake, but because he already played the little prince, I'm not going to bother doing that. Let's just go for our evo cracker here and see... Okay, wow, that was a really bad NATO. He's definitely um, playing this pretty poorly. Like, as long as I don't completely throw this game, we're pretty much already in the clear here. And I don't even know... Okay, that was... Yeah, that we're just going to go for, like, a high bomb tower like this to pretty much ensure that the lightning can't hit... Okay, he didn't even hit the bomb tower with the lightning, so... There you go, I'm just gonna... Okay, really bad NATO, because that hog will still... Okay, well, alright, he saved himself, but... I don't know, man, this is... Uh, it's pretty much inevitable at this point that we're gonna win. So we just need two more Earthquakes, and we're, uh, we're, we're chilling. So let's just, yeah, make sure that we don't throw or anything. Um, Let's see, we'll actually go for a Mighty Miner, like this. And, okay, let's get a Log going. Uh... Let's see, let's go for Ice Spirit like this. Let's just cycle an Earthquake, and then all we need to do is get back to one more, and it's going to be GG. We don't even really have to use a Bomb Tower on this, but I'm just going to do it, like, just in case. But it's like, I, I don't even need to. I could have just played my cheap cards and cycle to an Earthquake. But yeah, either way, that guy made a lot of mistakes early on, made it easier for us to win that. But to be fair, I don't even think E-Giant is that difficult of a matchup for this Hog Bomb Tower deck here. Just because the Firecracker is very annoying for them, and it can sometimes be tough for them to break through the Bomb Tower. But either way, we're two-thirds of the way through the challenge now. In our next one here, so let's see what our starting hand's looking like. We do have the Firecracker. Might as well just start things off with her again. It worked last time, so why not? 
and he's gonna have arrows. Okay, well that's not a great sign. Arrows are, I would say, probably, um, well, one of the best counters to this deck, just because, uh, well, uh, you know, great answer to the Firecracker, but doesn't take out the Evolved one, to be fair. He's gonna have Zappies. Okay, well, Zappies are a good answer to the Mighty Miner. Alright, well, this is gonna be... Hmm. Maybe a bit of a tricky match. I don't know what he's using, though. Um, he's got the Giant Skeleton. Oh, he might be using Royal Hog's Giant Skeleton. This deck was meta um, a bit ago, but since the Giant Skeleton got buffed, maybe it's back. So, I'm just doing this because I have a feeling he's gonna wanna try to get a Fisherman on top of the Firecracker. So, I was just trying to prevent that and this is assuming he has the fisherman which i would assume he does okay we need to get that we need to make sure that giant skeleton stays the heck away from our tower that's why i went mighty minor like that we're gonna go for a hog now just to get some pressure going and uh he is gonna have the fisherman so this is kind of the deck i expected actually it is the uh the royal hog giant skelly deck so i think this matchup is actually pretty good for me because I do have the Bomb Tower, so I'm actually pretty happy with this matchup and the overall situation, I would say. He did get the King activated, but I don't think it really matters all that much because, uh, I don't know. He doesn't even have a Flying Machine, I don't think, because he has the Mother Witch instead. So that actually means that uh, we're actually going to do this. Instead of using my Bomb Tower, I'm going to use the Evolve Firecracker to defend instead. And like I said, or if I... Well, if he doesn't have another spell, this Evo Firecracker is going to be a big, big nuisance for him to deal with. Um, I'm actually very curious as to how he manages to deal with all this. Um, Evo Firecracker is still staying alive here. Mighty Miner, is it going to be able to take out that giant Skelly? Uh, not quite. We're going to have to go Goblins here, I think. And then, uh, ooh, well, let's get a Bomb Tower going. And we got to... Oh, let's... Alright, we gotta be really cautious here. Defensive Earthquake, just just in case. Just for good measure. You don't you don't want those Evo Skellies going anywhere near your tower. That's, uh... I'm sure you guys know that. So, he went for the Ghost. I'm gonna go for a Mighty Miner. We are gonna need to get that same lane for sure. I'm gonna go Firecracker. And, ooh, we're gonna have a really nice opportunity, actually, to get a good, uh... Mighty Miner bomb off. So, that's, that's pretty cool. We're just going to get a log going here, and let's see, maybe like that, and then we get a bit bomb tower, obviously. Um, Alright, let's just get a mighty miner going. I think we're chilling. Bomb tower just carries us in this matchup, I feel like. We're just big chilling over here at this point. Hog coming in as well, and uh, might want to try to get some protection for that Evo Cracker. Hog gets a shot in, because the fisherman came in uh, kind of late there, I would say, so... We're, uh, we're looking pretty good here. I think at this point, as long as I don't make any major mistake, I mean, the momentum is just completely going our way here. And uh, let's go for a hog. We have some protection. So he can't go for a fisherman, easily pulling it away, because that mighty miner was there tanking. And even with that fisherman, we're... Oh, I thought we were maybe going to get another hog hit. We didn't end up getting one, but that's okay. He's going to go for his mother witch. Ooh, that was... Wow, that is clutch. This... Yeah, this is just a, uh, I have to say, this is quite a, uh, brutal matchup for him. Um, we do gotta watch out here, though, because he did just go for the pigs without me having the bomb tower, but the Evolve Firecracker is gonna be more than enough, I feel like, and we're gonna send in a Hog Rider here. Firecracker went in the other lane, doesn't matter, though. We're gonna pop the ability with the Mighty Miner. Boom! Hog making a beeline towards the tower. Is it gonna get end up getting the connection? Up, oh, Firecracker comes in, so it would have regardless, even if the Hog didn't get a shot, and that is going to put us now 9-0 in this grand challenge we have gotten some pretty good matchups a lot of these games like that last one was definitely a uh, blessed matchup for uh for us especially because he didn't have a flying machine or anything like if he had the flying machine instead of the uh mother witch that might have been you know a bit of a concern but he didn't so that just made things pretty easy for us well earthquake on top of the mortar Let's see, um, maybe we, uh, just go Hog. Could have maybe played it other lane of the Little Prince, but I guess it's okay. Send it in, see what he's got here, and he is gonna have a NATO, but he actually played it late, so the Hog still managed to get a shot, so that was kind of bad on his end. I will say, this is a pretty challenging matchup, probably. It's, uh, not really easy to win against a building and a NATO, so we'll, uh, see how we want to go about this. We'll, uh, do our best, of course, but... 
this is uh it's gonna be a bit of a toughie but like i said we'll uh, see what we can do we're gonna go in for the uh hog here i'm gonna get a firecracker going to defend the mortar and once again a bad uh a bad nato because the hog ended up uh still getting a shot on the tower so this guy's gonna have to figure that out soon sooner rather than later he might end up losing this game because of misclicking natos because that's already two free hits we got that could have otherwise been avoided if he knew how to play his uh tornado properly so anyway let's uh ooh, i don't really have a good play here i think i'm just gonna cycle a log my cycle's a little wonky i'll tell you what probably our best bet is going hog on this evo mortar that's uh kind of our uh our best play and uh ooh, this is uh Mighty Miner hopefully can come in clutch because this is a little bit of a... Oh, the log took out the Little Prince. That's clutch. I don't know why. I thought the log was not going to be enough. It was barely enough, though. Let's go hog like this to distract the Mortar and then go for the Evo Cracker on the Mortar. That's going to be really nice. Look at that. Yeah, we're getting chip damage on the Tower, taking out the Mortar effectively. That's really good stuff for us right there. So I'm just going to go Mighty Miner in the back. And yeah, we are winning. We are doing very good. But I do believe he probably has the rocket. So we got to be really mindful about that rocket cycle, which is obviously really scary. And uh, okay, well, this time around, he ended up... Oh, I was going to say it was a good NATO, but it actually was not because the firecracker ended up staying alive because the NATO made the log miss it, I think, if I remember correctly. So... This guy has not even played a single good tornado yet, which is wild to think because he's played so many. We're going to send in the hog again and go for a log here. He's going to rock it, okay. So that actually ended up being a good rocket. I have to give him credit there. Um, and that actually ended up being a nice NATO, his first good tornado of the game, actually. So that's um, a bit concerning for us. We are, we are going to have to be pretty careful here now. Log coming in, though, and that hog is not going to get a connection because he went for a tornado. Okay, so he's playing pretty decent now. we got to watch out. I actually, to be fair, should probably be going in for uh, for bomb towers on top of his mortars. I don't know why I haven't done that yet, but better late than never, I guess. We're going to get an earthquake going here. And uh, Evo Cracker, ooh, almost came in and got a shot. Unfortunately, it did not. That's a bit unfortunate. But um, maybe we can get something going here. We're going to go for a... We're going to go for a little bit of a push here, actually. We're going to go in for a uh, hog as well here. And I don't know what just happened. Did he just disconnect or did he just get scared of our push? Either way, we're going to walk away with the win. I don't know what happened. Someone needs to explain to me what happened, lol. <laughs> a lol, I don't know. Kind of funny. His name is lol. I'm kind of lol, lol, lolling right lolling is that a word can i say that i don't know who cares either way i'm gonna go for a hog right now we're gonna start things off with some pressure good old-fashioned hog at the bridge first play of the game and those barbs managed to fully counter it he got them down just in the nick of time we're gonna go for a log here and then we're gonna get a ice spirit going this might be lava lava would be pretty challenging i have to say it would be quite challenging we'll see what we can do though we're gonna go in for a mighty miner here He's actually going to go for a miner and a mega minion. So we're going to pop that. We're going to send in a hog here as well. And uh, let's see what he wants to do. He's got a DP. So hmm, this is interesting. All right. He just went arrows. So perfect time to go for the firecracker, of course. Let's uh, get that mega minion the heck away from the firecracker, though. And then we're going to want to log this. And uh, actually, I kind of want to go goblins here just to apply a little bit more pressure forced a miner out of him he is going to get the king activation but um firecracker does stay alive on the uh the back end i wonder if i should have gone for a hog with her but then he would have gone for the evo barbs of course so i don't know if it would have been the play uh he might go for a lava right now i wouldn't well actually i don't even know if he has lava to be fair i i actually don't know what this deck is i'm uh i'm rather confused but I think uh, Bomb Tower is the best play in this situation, uh, just because, yeah, I don't know, I'm, we might get screwed over if he goes for a Balloon now, but I truly think I had to go Bomb Tower there, it was uh, 
really our only play, I feel like. So I still don't know what the heck this guy is using. I, I really don't know. I mean, arrows and zap really does make me think it is some sort of air deck, but in reality, I just I just don't know at this point. I We're in for a bit of a surprise. Well, we are going to go hog here, and uh, he's going to go miner in the back. He's got an inferno. Okay, uh, I think this is a balloon deck. If I uh, had to guess, if I had to do it, like my life was on the line, I... Alright, well, it's it's Graveyard. How about that? A little bit of a uh, off-meta Graveyard deck, that's for sure. So we're just going to go Mighty Miner. We're going to pop the ability here, and then we're going to send in a Hog. So that was really nice defense, I'd say. Hog coming in, and he's going to get the Barbs coming in. Miner is not going to end up targeting that Firecracker like he wanted. And he might end up having to go in for Arrow Zap on top of the Firecracker. If he does that, though, that's completely fine, because we got another Firecracker coming in. We're going to go for Goblins here. Let's see what he chooses to do. He's going to go for the Inferno, so let's get a Hog going right now. And the Evo Cracker still stays alive. Mega Minion, he's going to shoot the Hog. He's forced to go for a Zap. We're going to go for a Nice Spirit over here. And his arrows are out of rotation right now. Firecracker is going to end up shooting that Dark Prince. And the Mega Minion is going to be taken out as well. And we're just keeping the pressure on here. And he's going to go Dark Prince in that lane. We're going to send in a Hog in this lane. We're going to go for an Earthquake again. And I do not know if he's able to afford Barbarians. He goes in for the arrows here. Hog is going to distract the Dark Prince pooled in the other lane. And this is looking better and better as the match progresses. He is going to go in for a Graveyard. But we should probably... Oh boy, the Ice Spirit didn't end up... Uh... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. That was a bit of an oopsie on my end, I have to say. Um, the Ice Spirit was misclicked. That's, uh, I think that actually is gonna cost us the whole game now. I think this is over. I think this is it. I think I lost. That was, uh, kind of my bad, to be fair. Um, well, that's, uh, that's a bit tragic, I have to say. I was kind of winning the whole time, and then the one Ice Spirit slip up, and the Dark Prince just went right towards my tower. Yeah, that, uh... Probably was a deserved loss, to be fair. Well, hopefully we can bounce back after that loss and uh, close out the challenge still. We're just going to go Hog here. He's going to have a cage. So this is making me think it's, uh, well, I was going to say Recruits, but now that he's got the Knight, it's a uh, very high chance it could be E-Giant, actually. But I guess we'll uh, we'll see soon enough if that is the case. So let's uh, let's see here what he uh, he plays next. He's gonna have a bowler, yeah, so, uh, E-Giant, I think, is a pretty fair guess, I would say. Well, he's got the little prince. Let's, uh, up. Oh. Didn't go off, that's okay, I guess. Uh, oh, well, he's got, he's got arrows, that's kind of a bummer. Alright, well, we're gonna just get a bomb tower going here. I feel like I kind of have to. I need to get something down for the, uh, for the bowler. I don't know, maybe that was a mistake doing that, but I think we're going to be okay. I just need to make sure I can cycle back to another bomb tower quickly if he is in fact using uh, E-Giant. And uh, he is going to have the NATO. Oh, he misclicked the NATO. Wow, so that's um, that's pretty brutal right there. He misclicked that, so he doesn't get the king activation. Um, this kind of sucks though. Another deck, well, that has a, uh, a NATO and a building, which is just not a... Uh, not a great sign, to say the least, but we're going to go Mighty Miner here. He's going to go for the Bowler. Let's actually get the... Oh, let's see. Depending on what he has, that could actually be pretty annoying for him. Goes in for the Little Prince, but not before the Mighty Miner gets a lot of damage on the tower. So, that is very good for me. Um, definitely pretty happy about that. And he actually went in for the ability. That is quite surprising. Um, let's get a Mighty Miner going here, and then we're going to go in for a Hog. I'm actually losing, I realize, because of the, uh, once again, a bad NATO. Uh, do-do-do-do-do. He's got a Baby Drag. Interesting. Okay. I feel like he's got to have an E-Giant. He just hasn't used it yet for some reason. But I would, uh... It's a drill. Hello. Drill. Wow. This is quite the deck. Drill. That's good to know. I'm glad I uh, I'm glad I know that now. I would have never guessed it was drill though. That's uh that's pretty wild. Drill um 
so he's got NATO, Drill, and Cage. That's a, that's a heck of a lot of Hulk counters, if you ask me, but it's nice now that I know he's got Drill, because it just means all I gotta do is, well, save my, uh, my Bomb Tower for the Drill, but I didn't even have to do that, because he decided to play it in, uh, in the other lane, so instead, I can try to get a counter push off of it. Hog gets a shot, even though he ended up going for that cage, so this is, uh, this is looking quite good, I would say. Probably get a log going here. He is going to go in for the drill, um, and he does decide to play the ability. Let's see, is he going to go arrows? Uh, did he even have the arrows in cycle? Maybe he didn't. Otherwise, I am a bit confused as to why he decided not to... Uh... Alright, well... That firecracker might have not been the best play, um, but it's okay. It's alright, I think. Um, let's see here. Oh, wow, he actually went for it in that lane, okay. And he went for the... Oh my gosh, that is so unlucky. Alright, that's fine, though. Alright, let's just cycle an earthquake here. I think we're just gonna spell cycle him out. That kind of seems like the play. Just because I can't really get a hog to the tower, especially in triple. But, um, we're gonna get the job done regardless, and that is going to be a nice win. No clue what that matchup is, but, I mean, I can't... I don't know, it's weird, because you, you're, you're thinking, right? Like, well, he's got arrows for the firecracker, he has two buildings and a NATO. Wouldn't that make the matchup hard? Well, it's kind of exactly that, why it's actually, ironically, not as hard as you might think, because it makes his cycle so awkward, and in general, it's just a very strange deck so once i figured out what he was using i was able to adapt accordingly and kind of like out cycle him but either way one more to go all right here we go well let's see if we are able to close out the challenge here it's honestly a tough call whether you want to go for hog first play or firecracker first play i think both of them work and in the end i just decided to go hog first play i think that uh that worked out especially because the hog ended up getting a uh, couple shots on the tower so he's got the uh, the Mega Minion. Let's just go Mighty Miner here to protect the Firecracker. Makes things just a little bit more annoying for him. And he's going to go for the Giant. So Giant, Mega Minion, Archers. Maybe he's running... Uh, well, I don't know. Could actually be uh, potentially... Uh, could be like Giant Double Prince. Kind of hard to say. We'll find out soon enough, I guess. That's just to ensure the Giant didn't get a shot. I wanted to go Ice Spirit. And he's got the Bowler. So, hmm, this is quite interesting. Bowler Dark Prince, uh, that hog is going to get a lot of damage on the tower. Dark Prince kind of did nothing to uh, stop that hog. It kind of just got stuck behind the bowler. That was pretty funny. So just like that, incredible start to this match. Couldn't be honestly more happy with how this start went, considering we already took half of his tower. Um, we are going to send that Mighty Miner in the other lane. We're going to log that, and then I think get Goblins going here, and that should be... Uh, really nice defense and just an incredible start to this match we've hardly taken any damage we've already taken half of his tower the only thing he's got going for him is he did get the king activated but i don't know uh all how much that's gonna end up helping him hogs coming in here and uh we could actually go for our evolved firecracker to try to get some chip damage and just kind of be annoying because it's gonna be rough for him to deal with we do that and then we go mighty miner to uh protect her and he's kind of uh I have to say, he's kind of screwed. I just protected the Firecracker as well. This is kind of... I would say this is actually one of the easiest matchups you could ask for with Hog EQ, to be completely honest. It's pretty, luck it's pretty lucky we ended up getting this matchup in the, uh, the last game of the challenge here. I can say this as someone who used to run Giant uh, Double Prince. Any Firecracker deck was kind of an instant loss the uh, vast majority of the time. And he's not using Giant Double Prince, but it's pretty dang close to it because he has the uh the giant the dark prince and the miner so it's pretty similar to giant double prince miner to be fair it's a little different but basically the same idea and it really goes to show that it's quite a challenging matchup and this is exactly why i hated playing against hog when i was running giant double prince or even just giant miner for that uh for that matter but that is going to be a nice 12 win here Give this hog deck a try. Definitely, I would say, right now, this is the best hog deck in the meta. You can, of course, though, use the Tesla instead of the Bomb Tower if you want, if you're struggling 
against air decks, but I think in this current meta with a lot of the Royal Hogs, Bomb Towers should probably be the go-to. So let's go ahead and open up the, uh, the chest, see what we get. Make sure to like the video if you guys did end up enjoying it. Subscribe if you guys are not subscribed already, and thanks again. Until next time, guys.